Hi everyone, I'm Chung Wen for God of Mobile, and in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Dell XPS 11. The XPS 11 is a very lightweight, 8, uh, Windows 8.1 system and it looks like any traditional Ultrabook with a nice design to it. However, the XPS 11 is a very unique system on the market today. When closed, it looks like any other uh, clamshell Ultrabook and when you open it, you have a lid with a display in the top portion and a keyboard deck on the bottom. With just a two and a half pound weight, it actually clocks in at just under two and a half pounds at 2.4 pounds. The XPS 11 has a screen that articulates 360 degrees so you can use it both in a traditional Ultrabook fashion or when you rotate the screen all the way back, you can use it in tablet mode. In tablet mode, um, all the keys and the trackpad here on the back are disabled so you can use it comfortably as a tablet and not, have to, um, and not worry about having to accidentally press any of the buttons or the trackpad on the rear side. Let's go ahead and before we take a look at the articulating design, let's go ahead and take a look at the overall design of the XPS 11. Dell has chosen to use a carbon fiber material both on the top and on the bottom portion of the system to give it a more lightweight feel. And this is a great thing because it adds a soft touch coating to it and it's not as cold as touching cold metal. So when you're holding it in tablet mode, this is more inviting to hold and it's more comfortable because it's a little bit warmer to touch rather than touching cold metal, especially in the early morning hours. The soft touch finish also adds a little bit of grippability to the tablet so that you won't accidentally drop it. And at two and a half pounds, although it is light in tablet mode, this is very important because um, it does allow you to hold the uh, tablet more ergonomically. In addition to the um, to the carbon fiber finish, Dell also included a nice machined aluminum bezel around both the bottom lid as well as the top lid of the XPS 11. And this not only makes it feel a little bit more premium, but also makes the design a little bit more sturdy because you're gonna be constantly flipping and closing the lid. And not only that, you would also have to rotate it if you wanna use it in tablet mode. Dell is specifically saying that the XPS 11 is a tablet first design um, rather than an Ultrabook first design and the tablet actually ships um, in this configuration with the keyboard exposed on the back side. So it does show that the XPS 11 has a more tablet-like heritage and this is important because the keys on the keyboard of the XPS 11 isn't a traditional um, key that you click in so there's no tactile feeling to the key. You do have an island style key arrangement that's backlit um, however, the keys don't actually move in and out. When you press on it, it's just a membrane key and um, it's actually still a full-size keyboard. So you do have a membrane key that's separated um, by an, um, a glossy black piano finish and it looks very elegant and it looks like the keys do travel but there are there is no travel to the keys. Rather, when the sound or the volume is on, every time you press in on the key or touch type on the key, you'll notice that there's a little clicking sound to make it sound like or appear that you're typing. So this, um, when you, it combined with the actual experience of typing and the noise um, or the audio feedback, it makes it, uh, it makes it so that touch typists will be assured that they're typing the correct word or letter on the keys. So you do have this full-size keyboard and you have a very uh, large and roomy trackpad area here. The trackpad has the built-in buttons for um, left and right click. However, these um, buttons are built into the trackpad and when you press down on it, it actually presses down on the entire trackpad. So it's similar to what Apple has done on its MacBook Pro and MacBook Air series. This not only allows you to have a more efficient space for the trackpad, but it also allows for gestures to be performed on the trackpad to give it a more roomy appearance. As the keys also have this rubberized uh, finish, the areas around the trackpad has the same finish, which is nice because when you rest your wrist on this, these uh, two areas, um, it's not as cold as resting it on um, the solid aluminum surface of a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, so it's a little bit more inviting to use. 
in general, I found that the keyboard was relatively accurate, and it's about 80 to 90 percent accurate. It's similar to Microsoft's uh, Touch Cover 2 in that there is a strong backlighting to the Dell XPS 11 keyboard, and both keyboards don't have a tactile uh, mechanism, so it's more of a membrane style keyboard. Um, the Dell XPS 11 keyboard is a little bit bigger and features more full-size keys with um, appropriate spacing between the keys than when compared to the um, Microsoft Surface Touch Cover 2 keyboard. In general though, um, Dell did adjust the sensitivity of the keyboard to be a little bit more conservative. So when I typed, it's sometimes um, some keys don't register, especially when you're typing fast. So accuracy is somewhat reduced on the Dell keyboard than when compared to the Microsoft keyboard. Let's continue our journey around the XPS 11 to see what ports are included with the device. Starting from the left-hand edge from the rear to the front, you'll notice that there's a power port here for which a power brick is included with the system. There's a full-size USB port, an HDMI port to connect to an external uh, monitor, as well as the 3.5mm headphone jack. Just below it is, a, is one of two stereo speakers on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, opposite um, to this um, placement would be the second uh, stereo speaker for the XPS 11. You'll also find uh, hardware controls for the volume key, so you do have volumes up and down toggle here. Interestingly though, the power button is actually located on the front edge of the device. So on the right front edge here, you'll notice that there's a power button and the button will actually glow when the device is charging. Um, it's hard to feel when you're getting the device out of the box for the first time, and it feels like the power button might be in an obscure location. However, it's kind of a natural placement once you get used to it because the power button is accessible not only for use as an ultrabook, so you'll have access to the power button um, when you're using it in a clamshell laptop mode, but you'll also have access to it in a convenient manner when you're using it in a tablet mode. Let's go ahead and take a look at the right edge of the device, again from the rear to the front. You have a lock port so you can secure your XPS 11 tablet to a desk, as well as a second full-size USB port, an SD uh, card slot, as well as a second um, stereo speaker. In general, with a, an 11.6 inch Quad HD resolution screen, the Dell XPS 11 has a very bright and vivid screen. The screen resolu resolution is much higher than that of the Microsoft Surface Pro 2 and is one of the highest for a tablet or ultrabook in this category right now on the market. The screen isn't as bright as that of the Surface Pro 2, however you do still have great viewing angles, so you do have wide viewing angles still with the XPS screen. However, despite having a more limited brightness with the display, the Dell XPS 11 um, does have a very readable display when outdoors under direct sunlight still, and that's because Dell has focused on reducing the reflectivity of the screen. Also, with the stereo speakers being superbly loud and a Core i3 or Core i5 configuration with Intel HD graphics, you do have strong multimedia capabilities with the XPS 11, so you can use it both um, in this mode to watch movies or in a stand mode like this um, to watch videos as well. The XPS 11 will ship with Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 out of the box. And the nice thing about Windows is that you can run both um, the Metro UI style apps, as you can see here with the live tile user interface, or you can go into desktop mode and you can run apps that are designed for Windows 7 or earlier. This will give you access to Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and other Creative Suite software. Um, as well as other titles that are not available through the Windows Store. And um, you also can connect an external CD or DVD ROM to install files that way as well. 
Dell has um, included a very limited number of pre-installed apps. So in addition to OneDrive or SkyDrive, the Bing application, as well as Skype and the suite of calendar, people, and mail applications, you do have a number, a limited number of Dell applications, and including the Dell update for update for updating the Dell drivers, as well as my Dell for exploring more of your PC. When using the Dell XPS 11, uh, Dell recommends that this is a tablet first device and you can clearly see that it is a tablet first device based on the keyboard. Rather than having physical keys on the keyboard like what Lenovo did with the Yoga series of devices, Dell's keys, um, which utilizes a membrane key, just feels a little bit more solid when you're holding it in tablet mode so it doesn't look like you're accidentally pressing in on the keys and it gives it a more sturdy and rugged feel to it rather than um, accidentally pushing in on the keys when you're holding it in tablet mode in this orientation. However, having a built-in keyboard is nice, so it does compete also with Microsoft Surface Pro 2. And um, when compared to the Surface Pro 2, rather than having the um, hinge on the back, having this whole hinge that can articulate to any degree um, makes this a more flexible tablet so you have uh, better viewing angles and you don't have to juggle. If you're using this device on your lap, you don't have to try to balance having the screen portion and the keyboard portion stay on your lap and not topple over. It also makes this device with its extremely thin display um, not feel top heavy like the Surface Pro 2 does in your lap. So it gives you more flexibility this way. And when you're on a tight airplane tray table um, without having to flip out the, the hinge uh, kickstand, it just feels like you have more space to maneuver um, the XPS 11, despite the fact that the screen is one inch larger than on the Surface Pro 2. As we've mentioned before, compared to the Surface Pro 2, the keyboard here is very competitive not to the touch cover 2, but the t uh, not to the type cover 2, but more to the touch cover 2, in that both covers um, have a membrane like uh, keyboard. However, with an attached keyboard, this one offers a little bit more flexibility. And when you compare both devices, um, especially with the Surface Pro 2 with the keyboard attached, um, the weight is relatively very similar despite the Dell having a larger screen. In conclusion, in Ultrabook mode, the Dell XPS 11 does offer a little bit more flexibility thanks to the keyboard. However, the keyboard is still a little bit tough to type on and the accuracy is kind of reduced um, in that you would have to adjust to the keyboard and the keyboard actually is optimized to minimize on accidental key presses. So sometimes keystrokes don't register with the system. So you'll have to utilize a spell check app to make sure that you um, have typed everything correctly before sending it out. However, in tablet mode, it's a superb system that gives you the option to have a keyboard for quickly replying to emails or typing a quick note on the go. I wouldn't recommend the XPS 11 as your main system if you're a touch typist. However, it does give tablet users a way to consume devices with a beautiful uh, Quad HD display and also have the option to respond to emails or type in a quick web address while on the go. I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile, and this is a quick look at the Dell XPS 11. Join us at gottabemobile.com for the full review of this tablet um, Ultrabook Hybrid.